Hello everyone, Marcus Dahl here, and today I want to start off a three-part video series whereby I'm going to be covering the sense of virtual reality touch, which allows us to feel another world. So, what are these three parts? The first part of this video is going to cover what VR touch is, as well as why we want it. The second part will go into what we have in terms of technology right now to achieve full-on, full-body VR touch. The third part will deal with my own VR system towards achieving the sense of VR touch at this moment in time, although do note it is hypothetical. To begin, let's get an ironclad definition of what exactly I'm referring to whenever I mention the sense of touch. A lot of people, whenever they think the sense of touch, typically think of Aristotle's view of the sense of touch, which is cited within the five senses idea. This sense idea is, in a way, incorrect, as it doesn't completely cover the full-on strata of what the sense of touch necessarily means. Touch can, in a way, be subdivided into four separate senses. These senses are mechanoreception, which allows us to detect whenever we've made contact with an object, stretch reception, which allows us to detect the compression and contraction of the muscle tissues of our body, nachioreception, which allows us to detect the sense of pain, and lastly, thermoreception, which is the detection of changes in temperature outside of the body. Got it? Alrighty then, so you're probably wondering, what do we need this for then? Let me give you an answer to that question, although I'm going to divide this into two parts, the practical effects and the aesthetic effects. On a practical level, it allows us to achieve a much greater sensation of what we're doing within the VR world. As an example, let's say I'm holding a ball using a new advanced VR system that allows me to use my mind's inputs in order to control a VR character on a one-to-one -one scale with my body. This is great and all, but without the sense of touch, that ball can be in my hand all at once. I just won't be able to feel it. And that's going to be a huge breaker in terms of the sense of immersion within a VR context. As we gain more immersion with our controls, we're going to need an equally significant change of immersion in our bodies. Not only that, but it isn't always going to be us that's going to be touching the VR world. Sometimes the VR world is going to be touching us. What happens in that case? We aren't necessarily able to discern exactly where things are touching us just based on the senses of sight and sound. Sound may work a little bit whenever we don't have any other competing stimuli. But if you're in an environment like a battlefield or a very loud club, you aren't going to necessarily be able to echolocate exactly where things are contacting you, are you? So, this is a situation where haptics is fundamentally essential in order to detect exactly where we're being contacted from and react accordingly. In a way, this could also be useful for level designers. All of a sudden, rather than hiding the switch to a door via a different color, you decide to hide it via the texture. The player is going to have to feel around the wall and detect which brick is of a different texture in comparison to the other ones, and then proceed to push it in to get to the hidden passageway. That's just a very quick and easy one. I don't even want to know what the more advanced designers are going to achieve once they get their hands on this. So, how about we go into aesthetics and see what VR immersion of touch is going to bring us. Oh boy. On an essential level, bringing of the sense of touch into any space, let alone VR, is going to be a complete and utter revolution in terms of its impact, period. We have almost nothing that allows you to transport sensations of touch across any dimension aside from the real world physical barrier in any capacity via a computer. The ability to feel an entirely new sense using a computer essentially gives us an entirely new vector with which to work with. It's going to change the world irregardless of its implementation in VR. Even in regular gaming, it'll have a significant impact. So, what does this bring us? In a way, it lets you get lost in VR on a level that we cannot compare with only sight and sound. These two elements are already immersing us on a degree that is unbelievable to our own minds. Adding in the sense of touch, I feel, may be just enough to completely and utterly convince us that we've left this world on a degree that we might not necessarily want to come back. To add on to this appeal, VR actions are probably going to feel significantly more intuitive the moment we have haptics. Touching a ball with just an imagery or sound perception isn't going to be enough to make it feel realistic or intuitive, but add in the sensation of touch along with a full body control system, and we're going to have something so intuitive not even a touchscreen can compare to it, which is only going to further increase the market for virtual reality in the long run. Lastly, on an aesthetic sense, it's really hard to quantify how important the sense of touch is to our experience of our daily lives. 
To give an example of one practical usage in this case, let's say you're a parent and you've just had to go far away for work and you miss your kids, and your kids probably miss you. Normally the best you could hope for is giving them a video chat or something along those lines, but all of a sudden with VR Touch, you could actually embrace your child as though they are right there in front of you. You could give your lover a hug or a kiss, no matter how great the boundary of distance is between you. In the end, VR Touch just amounts to another way that we can communicate and express our feelings to one another in a fashion that we just couldn't do so before. I can probably go on forever talking about the amount of benefits VR haptics can provide, but alas, this is all meaningless unless we manage to achieve a solution that allows us to have VR haptics or touch in the sensation and capacity that we want them to. Well, we're starting to get into the territory of the second video. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've been informed on some way on the matter of why we need VR haptics and touch if we're going to go and advance the technology and medium as much as we want it to. Well, this has been Marcus Dahl, logging out.